Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News. I'm Kevin, and today we're gonna watch Starship's lower half crawl its way down Highway 4 to its launch pad down in Boca Chica, Texas. Then we'll add Starlink to the equation, check out the latest updates with Crew Dragon, then finish with today's honorable mention. Let's get to it. So Lab Padre's back online and more powerful than ever, and just in time too. This morning, Highway 4 was closed down for an hour, just as scheduled, and the Mark 1 Starship's lower half was rolled from the construction site to the pad it will be launching from about two miles away. The upper half was left behind for now, but all the locals were out in force to document the short journey. And once it arrived to its destination, it was greeted by Starhopper, which successfully paved the way for the upcoming 20 kilometer flight. That mission will test the skydiving landing sequence of Starship and is expected to happen by the end of 2019. Local road closures have been updated to November 7th, 8th, and 12th, but these are not launch days. It has long been apparent that SpaceX will eventually use a commercialized version of Starship for Starlink deliveries. And Chief Operations Officer Gwen Shotwell recently confirmed that the exact number of Starlink sats to be placed inside Starship at once will be 400. Obviously, this will make the Starlink program a lot cheaper, and Elon Musk estimates Starlink could generate more than 30 billion a year for the company. What a convenient, economically efficient circle that they've got planned there. Starship lowers the cost for Starlink. Starlink pays for the development of Starship. What else makes the Starlink satellites less expensive than the competition is that they're only built to last for five years in space. And so SpaceX will continually refresh the technology they use in their constellation. Moving on to other news, SpaceX tweeted a couple pictures of their progress with the Crew Dragon that will take astronauts to space in early 2020. The capsule was united with its Super Draco thrusters that will act as a launch escape system if something goes wrong with the rocket during flight. An earlier valve design for the plumbing for these engine's pumps was responsible for a catastrophic explosion that occurred during a static firing back in April. That static test will be done once again no earlier than November 6, before the in-flight abort is attempted in four to six weeks. Yes, parachutes. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. A few days ago, the United States Air Force landed their X-37B space plane at Kennedy Space Center, returning it from a 780-day mission in low Earth orbit. Launched upon a Falcon 9 rocket on September 7th of 2017, OTV-5 was officially meant to allow scientists and engineers to recover experiments tested in a long-duration space environment. However, unofficially, it's likely that the X-37B was used as an on-call spy satellite. In fact, the spacecraft routinely overflew Russia for much of the time it spent in space. It also carried a small solar ray and radiator for power, as well as a hydrazine maneuvering system with Delta V reserves, which would allow it to change orbit. This was the fifth mission for the reusable spacecraft. The previous one, OTV-4, placed the same X-37B in orbit for 717 days. Its next mission, OTV-6, is expected to launch the craft once more upon an Atlas V rocket no earlier than Q2 of 2020. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. There will be no episode on Saturday because Carrie is forcing me to have a good time at Disney World this weekend. So I'll see you next week. Godspeed. <laughs>